Hey, we're on chapter 14, page 213. Everyone could tell Dimitri Simon was angry, not just at the people who screwed up his game by cheating, but at himself for letting it happen. He regained his smile just, af just a little after Carl Lester was recovered in the parking lot, but he was no longer the boisterous Santa Claus that they had met that morning. He announced that everyone should go enjoy the picnic, that he and his men would be speaking to each team in an effort to figure out what had happened and who, if anybody, will win the prize money. The teams were led to a large field behind the factory. Winston accepted some congratulations and claps on the back from kids on other teams. Mal tried to get everyone to lift Winston up on their shoulders as if he had just caught the winning pass in a Super Bowl, but there were no takers, least of all Winston. The employees of Simon's Snack Foods were already behind the factory, sitting at picnic tables and eating hamburgers. Music was playing in several large barrels con that contained bags of potato chips and pretzels were there, and Winston wondered if the Simon's workers were sick to death of eating salty snacks. The boys and their teacher claimed a table and sat. What's going to happen now? Jake said. Well, now I'm going to eat about 17 hamburgers, Mal said. I've had enough cereal bars to last a lifetime. Uh, you've had two cereal bars, Mr. Garvey said, and having that food handy saved us valuable time. We wouldn't have won if we'd stopped for lunch somewhere. We didn't win, so Jake said, not until Simon says we did. Oh, well, we'll see about that, said Mr. Garvey. Go get your food and I'll watch your table. So the boys got to the long line for food. Dimitri Simon had, as usual, pulled out all the stops. There were three grills serving up all kinds of picnic fare. But before you even got there, there were two tables stocked with salads and side dishes. The mood wasn't as celebratory as Simon surely had hoped, but everything looked delicious. They waited patiently in line, paper plates and plastic utensils in hand. As they approached the grills, Jake said, Hey, look over there. Across the field, Brendan Root had a picnic table to himself. He was slouched over, head in his hands. His teacher was gone, and his teammates, the two brothers, were sticking to themselves. Winston wondered how Brendan was going to even get home. Let me get a hot dog too, please, Winston said to the man serving food. A few minutes later, bringing an extra plate and a can of soda, Winston said to Brendan, I brought you some food. Brendan looked up. Oh, his eyes were red. He'd been crying. He'd had stopped now, but his day, but sorry, but his great and happy enthusiasm was a long way off. Thanks, but I'm not really hungry. Well, maybe you will be later, Winston said as he sat down. Jake and Mel had gone back to Mr. Garvey. Brendan watched Winston work on his burger for a few moments, and then he pushed the food around on his own plate. People think I cheated, he said. No, they don't, Winston said. I know you didn't. It was your teacher. He asked us to guess who might be on the other teams. It's always good to be prepared, he had said. I didn't know what he meant by that. Anyway, I knew you'd be there. I mean, it's a giant puzzle event, but I called you just to make sure. I told my teacher your name, and he wrote it down. It's okay, Winston said. Well, the next day I saw a picture of you on his desk. A picture? Winston was a bit surprised. The one from the newspaper after you found your last treasure. Oh, that. That made sense. The local paper wrote a story from the previous treasure hunt and included a picture of Winston and his friends. Carl Lester must have tracked that down and not and given it to the cheater so he would know what they looked like. Ooh, that's creepy. Well, even when I saw your picture on his desk, Brendan continued, I never guessed what he was going to do. Why did he do that? Winston could only shake his head. I don't know. I guess he really wanted to win. Well, so did I, Brendan said sadly. Didn't know, Winston didn't know how to make Brendan feel any better. 
He wasn't sure if that was even possible right now, so soon after the grand prize money had slipped away. At least Brendan took a bite of his hot dog. Winston looked around for Brendan's teammates, but they were nowhere in sight. Then he started looking at the picnic tables. His eyes jumped from table to da table, his mind calculating. Brendan was temporarily forgotten. Winston, what are you looking at? I think I found a puzzle. You did? Where? The picnic tables. Look, starting from where we're sitting, we can walk in a straight line to another table. And from there to another table. You can trace a path that hits every picnic table by walking in a straight line horizontally or vertically. When you get to a table, you can turn or keep going straight. If you do it right, you'll get to every table exactly once. Go ahead to your packet. Looks like this. It's on page 244. I'll read those directions again. Starting from where, from where, ooh, starting from where we are sitting, we can walk in a straight line to another table. From there to another table, you can trace a path that hits every picnic table by walking in a straight line horizontally or vertically. When you hit a table, you can turn or keep going straight. If you do it right, you'll hit each table exactly once. All right, good luck. I'll see you in a little bit.